Welcome to the Human Flourishing Project. I'm your host, Alex Epstein. The title of today's episode is The Wisdom of Terry Hayes. And you might be wondering something I would have wondered had I heard such a title a couple weeks ago, which is, who is Terry Hayes? And Terry Hayes is the author of a book that unexpectedly had a big effect on me and that I, I, I really enjoyed. And part of the reason it's unexpected is that it's a novel, and I don't read that many novels. And uh, as many of my erudite friends uh, tell me, this is a mistake because novels are really valuable. And Terry Hayes is the author of a novel called I Am Pilgrim, and it's specifically a thriller novel, so maybe not the type of novel that my friends are always telling me about. Um, but it's... I found it very, very impressive, impressive, and to the point of being wise in two senses. One is I think there's a lot of wisdom in the book, some of which I'll talk about without giving away too much of the plot. Uh, but I should warn you, if you don't want anything at all given away, then I guess you just got to read the book first, and then you can listen to this later. But I'm, I'm really not going to give away anything that will fundamentally... Uh, change your experience of the book, at least not in my my best judgment. So there's wisdom in the book, but, and part, probably this is because I'm a writer, I found a lot of wisdom in reflecting on the caliber of the writing. So I want to just jump in and talk about in this novel four things that the author does really well, and for most of them I'll give a bunch of uh, examples so you can see if you agree with me. And there's just, it's, it's very, very impressive. So the first, the first, well, I'll do this. I'll summarize the, the four things and then I'll, I'll jump into them. So number one is just the ability to hold the reader's interest for 700 pages nonstop without exception. That's one thing. Two is the ability to convey the nature of an alien world. I'll talk about what that is. Uh, three is the ability to convey the nature of an unfamiliar profession. And then four is the ability to capture what I would call wonderful or sublime things about human experience. So the first one, which I won't talk about too much, but it is it is remarkable, is just the ability to hold a reader's interest for 700 pages. And if you look up I Am Pilgrim, I mean, you'll see this over and over where people think, oh, yeah, this is just going to be a doorstop. This is a big book. I'm not going to read it. And then it's just, no, I can't. I can't put it down. And part of what makes it impressive is it's it's not just that it sets up questions that you have and it's just constant cliffhangers, which TV is very, very good at doing that, at just setting up, oh, well, I wonder what happens to these characters and I care about these characters. It's It sets up genuine mysteries and puzzles, but also it's just, it's so well done. It just has its own... Just, just the enjoyability of reading the way he writes has its. It's just one wants more of that experience. And I haven't read that many novels, but I've probably read dozens or maybe hundreds, but probably just dozens. But there is it's just an unusual ability to captivate the uh, the reader. And I'm going to talk at the end about just what what he says about went into this but just reading it in particular as a writer i just think wow that is that is inspirational that you can just have it where every paragraph someone wants to read more and sometimes when editing one's own work it's hard to keep editing to the point where that's true but this is definitely an inspiration in that respect okay so i'll jump into the others where i'll have examples for each of them so number two is the ability to convey the nature of an alien world and in this case the alien world uh for the character so the lead character is a spy and he's a very very high level spy and one of the worlds that he's in is the arab world because his uh one of his related missions involves the arab world and different parts of it, including, as I'll talk about in a minute, Saudi Arabia. And he, when he's describing the, the different worlds, it's just amazing to me how quickly he can convey, he can put you in it and make you feel like, or at least make me feel like, oh my gosh, wow, this is, this is so stark. So here's one, here's a, a, a little sequence he has about public executions, which are the background of, which invo are involved in the background of one of the characters. Executions are about the only form of public entertainment permitted in Saudi Arabia. 
movies, concerts, dancing, plays, and even mixed sex, sex and even mixed sex coffee shops are banned. But everyone's welcome, women and kids too, to see someone lose their life. End quote. So just just I mean that's just two sentences and it's just oh my gosh, this is a totally different world than the one I live in and there's a lot really bad about that world. Now, I don't, he's talking about not, I don't know the exact state of Saudi Arabia in these respects today. It's definitely far from good, uh, but it might have improved. He's talking more about the 80s and 90s in this part of the book. Uh, and then another thing he has that I was impressed by is just describing very quickly what it's like to be on the receiving end. If, if a member of your family is publicly executed for defying the regime or for, for upsetting the regime, Quote, apart from close relatives, there were no visitors or phone calls. The nature of the crime meant the family was ostracized by friends and the community at large. In a way, the family, too, had been cast into an unmarked grave and buried. Unquote. Now, there are lots of examples of how he conveys an alien world, but I'll just give you a third, which has to do with the concept of wasta. So I'll give you two quotes on that. Uh, quote one, start the quote. Wasta is the way the Arab world works. It means connections, influence, a web of old favors, and tribal history, with Wasta doors, even to palaces, open. End quote. And then there's a specific thing about Wasta. So this is an, another quote. All through the searingly hot countries that extend from the Mediterranean down past the Arabian Gulf, there is one unfailing way to work out who has Wasta and who doesn't. The slang word for it is makfi, and it means tint, as in the coating you put on your car on car windows to keep the sun out. Restricted by law to 15%, the more wasta you have, the more makfi you can get away with. End quote. And I just felt like, wow, just reading this, I totally get it. It's not it's not something that is at all true in the US, but you get I mean, you sometimes in the US I think wish you could tint your car more, but just wow, there's this there's this way of functioning wasta and it's we can relate to it a little bit, particularly in how government works at its worst. But it's just, yeah, this is things are unlike say the US where a lot is is by money, which I think is uh in, in most sense is a very good thing because it's ultimately by your productive ability and by what you can trade. This is connections, influence, a web of old favors, tribal history. And then yeah, that's what makes the doors open. And then this this one example of tint. And I just think, oh yeah, I, I totally get that. That yeah, if you if you've got this kind of uh curious or or um you know mysterious and hard to get thing called Wasta, then you can basically tint your car as much as you want. And if you don't have it and you try to tint your car, then you're in big trouble. And just those things and that and the public execution, a lot of stuff just made me feel like, oh my gosh, this guy, this guy put me into this world really, really quickly. And I, uh, just as a writer, I just admire how quickly he can do that. And part of it is just knowing exactly what details to select to just quickly give someone a juxtaposition of the difference between the way their world is and the way this other world is. So that was my point two, the ability to convey the nature of an alien world. Now, a very related skill is, um, let's see, the ability to convey the nature of an unfamiliar profession. And so in this case, it was the specifics of being a spy, but then that's connected to the specifics of being a criminal and other things that spies are other kinds of people spies are dealing with. So one one part that he had, which is, again, it's always really quick, but he conveys a lot. So he's he talks about uh, a cop that he liked. And he says, quote, he didn't volunteer anything. And, and so the, the cop wasn't telling uh, the spy a lot about uh, the cop's exploits. So, quote, he didn't volunteer anything else. And I have to say, despite myself, I was warming to him. There's nothing worse than cops with war stories, unquote. And I have almost no experience with cops, but I mean, I do jujitsu with them sometimes. That's that's about it. And I've been pulled over by them when I used to drive so, uh, sometimes. But just you could, I could just totally get so quickly. Oh my gosh, I can totally get that there are certain people in this profession who are telling their war stories about their exploits, and that if you're in this world, you just get tired of that, and it probably comes across as uh, insecure. So another. Um, Another quote, and this is about how a killer works, whether it's a criminal or a like sort of a legal killer like this spy. And he's talking about uh, just a particular action by one of the villains of the book. 
a better, quote, a better man, a man with a wife and children and dreams for them, no matter how modest, a man who had seen less of killing and more of love, a decent man, in other words, would have wasted time by opening the door. I should, I should, uh, unquote for a second, I should have given the context that this is, there's somebody in the car that this person is concerned about. Okay, so it would have wasted, so the, the kind of decent person would have opened the door to see what's going on. And then a uh, quote continues, but he did exactly, and he, I'm concealing the person's name, he did exactly what I or any other real killer would have done. He decided to punch his fist straight at the tinted glass of the driver's window, unquote. And I just, again, very quick, but I get, yeah, if I'm a killer and that's what I do, like that's, I just go very, that's my default. I go quickly to that and I don't put myself at any risk. And I just, for that moment, I got, okay, I have no experience with this, but I can totally uh, get in it. Another aspect is about the use of legends. So legends as in a story about you that people are going to believe. So it's, and I'm going to conceal the character's name again. Not, it's probably not necessary, but I'll still do it. Uh, Quote, the character produced the tickets and pass that he had purchased online and laid them on a desk. The officer barely looked at them, but the character knew that it was the details, things like the girly magazine and in Damascus, the dirt under the fingernails that turned legend into reality, unquote. So I, again, I have no experience with creating a legend, but it, and there's some more detail on this. This guy just has a, a girly magazine, you know, so with naked women, it has dirt under his fingernails. And then that's what, you know, that's, that's like the subtlety of how one operates in, in getting away uh, with things. Uh, another one on just criminal protocol, quote, the, uh, the worst thing to do when you had broken into a home was to use a flashlight. Light leaked out and nothing alerted a neighbor or passersby, passerby faster than a beam of light, beam of light, sorry, sweeping around inside a house. The soft glow of a lamp, on the other hand, seemed normal, unquote. And then one more on spy protocol. Quote, once I got close to the house I was looking for, I pulled to the curb and parked a good 50 yards away. I pointed it out to Ben, made him name 10 significant features, and then repeat them. It was a standard way of imprinting, imprinting a memory, and to most studies showed that even under extreme stress, a subject would remember six of them. And there's actually uh, one more that I really liked. So, unquote to the last one, quote, they taught you from the earliest days that information didn't exist until it had been safely transmitted, unquote. And so, so all these little things, I really felt like, wow, I very, I have no experience in this kind of world. And this guy, he's not going on for paragraphs. He's just very succinctly able to, to put me in a world. And in his interviews, or one interview in particular, he talks about taking the reader on a journey. He, he's totally a, a master at that. And then the fourth thing I want to talk about that I was really impressed by, and this this occurs throughout the story, is just his ability to capture sublime or wonderful things about human experience. And and when somebody can do this and just make me feel like, oh, this is a part of life that I love, or I love that that he can see this in the world, that's a that to me conveys there's something really good about this person. And then I'm really glad that I can I can see the thing that they're seeing in that moment. So maybe the yeah the most uh, inspirational line of the book to me was it's talking about so the author is a spy but the spy wrote this definitive book on on um, I don't know the the exact broad topic but like criminal investigations or how to investigate and so there's a woman who is looking for a book for her husband on the subject because her husband is injured and so she's asking this Ill, this bookstore that specializes in this kind of uh, issue like criminal detective type things about you know what you should read and then the guy points him to the the uh, the spy's book and then she says so again it's just so succinct she she says to the bookseller and here's a quote seriously she said is it any good he smiled swept his hand around the room might as well throw the rest away unquote and I just love wow that is a perfect that's a you know a perfect just statement of of you know when you're if you're trying to write the definitive book on something which i have some experience with trying to do you kind of in some sense that's a that's a beautiful feeling that someone can have which is just wow this is yeah there are other valuable things but this one just really nailed uh that issue Uh, another uh short one where it's an elite agent talking about the uh the hero of the book so quote 
He was probably the best intelligent agent there's ever been. The special assistant smiled. I thought that was you. So did I, Whisperer replied, until I met him. So, unquote. So that's just this real worship of ability, among other wonderful things in life. Uh, there's another with uh, one of the women who grew up in Saudi Arabia who, who left. Quote, while to the outside world she was still a Muslim, at the heart of her, feeling abandoned by God, she only really worshipped life and her children now. Unquote. I just love the idea of worshipping life and her children. Uh, another one from this same woman's experience, quote, of all the lessons the girls would learn as young Muslim women, the one their mother demonstrated that night was the most important, to take command, to realize that the only stairway to heaven is the one you build yourself on earth, unquote. And this was the act of getting her first job. Uh, another quote I really like, and hopefully you'll be able to, if you read the book, which I highly recommend, you'll be able to enjoy these in context and it won't ruin anything because it's not really a dramatic thing. It's just something that I really enjoyed. So, quote, I felt my stomach knot, and I have to admit, for a few terrible heartbeats, I felt like giving up. But I knew that one of the hallmarks of every successful mission, perhaps of life itself, was a determination to never retreat, never surrender. Unquote. Uh, a few more. There's a scene where he is, he is talking to some people who are generally not admirable because uh, they're bureaucrats in a hostile regime but they're they're doing something they're doing something that he really appreciates and even though it's not going well and he just has this this way of thanking them which i found very uh, impressive so here's the quote you've done more than anyone you've done more than anybody could have asked i said quietly it was a thankless task but you did it with talent and good grace and i thank you wholeheartedly and then this is the end of his quote, and then the, the author describes, It was probably the first time they had heard genuine praise instead of empty flattery, and I could see on their faces the pride it brought them. Unquote. And I totally, that's not my own experience, but in that moment I totally got what it must be like when you're just, you know, you're in a position of power and people are always saying this BS to you, and then you get the real thing and what that must mean. And then how, how grateful I am to not be in a position where... People are flattering me uh, all the time. Uh, another one, quote, for the first time in what seemed like half a lifetime, I had no more questions, unquote. Just at the, you know, at the end of a certain kind of discovery process. I love that. Uh, this is one about an activist in the book, quote, she was so accustomed to swimming against the tide of international indifference, it didn't worry her. One day somebody would hear her and that person would change everything, unquote. And then there were a couple on uh, on how he validates a thought. There's a lot of really cool stuff in the book about just thinking. And I don't have any quotes on the following, but there's he, there are a bunch of, and in part because they they might too easily give away the plot, but there are many situations where he, he'll, he'll highlight, here's what I didn't notice at the time, but it's, it's not. It's not something arbitrary, like oh, here's something that happened to be on my mind. He'll give you the cert he'll give you what happened in the room, like here's what somebody said, and then I focused on this one thing, but I ignored this other thing at my peril. And it reminds it just reminded me at this moment of what Steve Jobs talks about when he talks about when he visited Xerox Park, uh, Palo Alto Palo Alto Research Center, which is where he first saw a graphical user interface uh, on a computer there called the Alto, which then inspired the Macintosh computer, which has then inspired basically every modern modern computer. And he said that he was just so taken by the graphical user interface that there were other there were other life changing innovations that were there too. There were two others, including what's called object oriented programming, and I believe the other one was something like modern uh, ne networked computing. I think that's how he would have characterized it. So the the whole basis of the internet and modern interconnectedness. And he just talks about, well, I, I was just so, I was so taken by this one thing, I couldn't even notice the others. And there are, there are kind of more life and death type things in this book where the, the, the hero of the book, or the spy is talking about how he didn't notice something in that. And that made all the difference. It's a part of the progression of the plot is both his figuring things out, but also the setbacks of these things that he did not uh, that he did not attend to that he theoretically could have uh, attended to. So there's just a lot of respect, I mean, a huge amount of respect in the book for 
good thinking. So here are a couple of, of quotes, not on that aspect of good thinking, but on validating thoughts. And in this, this one, it's particularly how he really goes to the effort of validating a thought before getting too excited about it. Quote, I said nothing, did nothing, felt nothing. I ran it through my mind once more to ensure that my longing for information hadn't colored my logic. Satisfied at last, determined not to surrender to any emotion, I turned and looked at every square inch of the gas station's office and roof. I was searching for something, and only when I found them did I unchain my feelings and let my heart soar. Unquote. So I love that idea of just, you know, you're validating things. It's so easy to get excited about an idea and then prematurely. And then another quote to this effect is, quote, I said nothing to Ben about my newly minted theory. I wanted to keep turning it over in my mind like some expensive architectural model to see if it held together, unquote. So I love that, uh, that too. So those are the four aspects of the book that I just found very impressive and inspiring and even wise. So it's the, the ability to just hold someone's interest for 700 pages, the ability to convey the nature of an alien world, particularly the uh, Arab world of the past several decades, or at least much of it, or at least the, the part of it that is sort of most negatively interfacing with uh, the rest of the world, including you know, those of us in what we can call the free world. And then three is the ability to convey the nature of an unfamiliar profession, particularly being a spy, and then the, the professions associated with that. And then four is the ability to capture sublime or wonderful things about human experience. Now, the uh, final thing that I really enjoyed about this book was learning a little bit about the author's experience writing it. And I there are not many interviews with him. I it's, I kind of get it when there aren't interviews with somebody who has a lot to say because I can see, oh yeah, this guy's not on Twitter. He's he's working on the next, ver you know, the sequel to this or he's working on some other thing. And there's a reason why he's not super available to me, even in terms of doing a lot of interviews that I can listen to and learn from. But I, there was one hour long interview that was really interesting. And then he had the acknowledgement section of his book, which was at the end of the book, which I like because I like reading it after I see if I actually like the book, and I really, I was really taken by the book. So it was great to read it, and in particular, for him to talk about in just how challenging it was for him. And I'll give some quotes because reading the thing, it just feels like this just came out of him perfectly formed. It's just like, oh, well, this is. It reads so smoothly. It feels like it must have been written. <laughs> so smoothly. And so I found this very inspirational to know about, okay, this is some of the challenge he, he went through. And so he, here are a couple quotes. He, he quotes an expression, writing a movie is like, because he, he had written movies before, writing a movie is like swimming in a bath, writing a novel is like swimming in the ocean. And then, quote, I had read that comment long before I embarked on Pilgrim, but even then I wasn't prepared for how, for just how big the ocean was and how much effort it would take to cross it. Unquote. And he talks about his difficulty and how one person that he thanked helped with that, quote, her enthusiasm, intelligence and support to say nothing of her patience have been crucial in seeing this novel through to publication. She bought the manuscript when it was only one third finished and from a debut novelist into the bargain and maintained her faith through the many long months and great difficulties that followed, unquote. So you get a sense of what was involved in, in creating a great creation. And then another quote on the encouragement he got from the CEO of the publisher. It would also be very remiss of me not to thank Carolyn Reedy. I think that's how you pronounce it. R-E-I-D-Y. The president and CEO of Simon & Schuster, who was gracious enough to read I Am Pilgrim and to give me enormous encouragement just when the doubts and anxiety were starting to get the better of me. I will always remember it. Unquote. And then a final one he has... Uh, the whole acknowledgement section is really enjoyable to read, as is the rest of the book, but he, he talks about his kids, and then he talks about one in particular. Quote, I have to make special mention of Dylan. Every morning he would come into my office, look at the pages I had done overnight, and nod his head. You're doing well, Dad, he would say each time. He was four years old, couldn't yet read, and I have no doubt it will remain the most heartwarming review I ever receive. Unquote. So even in his acknowledgments, he just can give you very, very quickly this great experience of, oh, yeah, well, wouldn't it be fun to have your four-year-old giving you encouragement uh, every day? Of course, not knowing exactly what you're doing, but just being generally supportive. So that's that's what I have to say about the wisdom of Terry Hayes. One one more thought I'll, I'll add is just that 
it's very rare. There are many, many people in the world. And yet it's very rare to see something that's done at a you know, truly excellent or master level. And I, I tend to be partial toward artistic or intellectual creations because it most relates to what I like to do myself. But I find that any time I see something and I see, wow, this person, this was executed with a lot of mastery. I think there's ma- there's there's a, a lot of wisdom to be gained both in in the content of the thing analyzing the execution of the thing and then learning about or and or from the person who created the thing. So that's what motivated me to learn a little bit more about Terry Hayes and to analyze some aspects of this book. And maybe in the future, I will do uh, another episode, another kind of wisdom of on someone you may n- never have heard of or a work you may never have heard of, but where there's something yeah, there's something there's some real mastery, some real greatness that that stands out even in a world of billions of people. Okay, that's it for this week. I will be back in two weeks with another topic. Not sure what it is yet. As always, if you have any questions, comments, love mail, or hate mail, you can email me at alex at alexepstein.com. No pro no response. Uh promised, but I read everything I get and I'm grateful for it. Also, you can join the discussion on Facebook, facebook.com slash human flourishing project. And to get notifications or email notifications, I should say, about the new shows that come out, go to humanflourishingproject.com. Also, might as well say, subscribe on a podcast platform such as, I guess it's not iTunes anymore, Apple Podcasts. And if you like it, uh, read a review. And you could leave a review if you don't like the podcast, but that would not please me as much. I'm, I'm more than happy to have you silent if you don't like the podcast. So anyway, yeah, make sure uh, to get the future episodes and I will be back in two weeks. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Uh, until the next episode, I'm Alex Epstein. This has been the Human Flourishing Project.